unseasonably warm weather here in Chicago. No snow. That's a good thing. St. Louis and Loyola, Chicago. All right, starting lineups. As we told you, Yuri Collins is back, and that's great for the Billikens. For Loyola, Chicago, one guy they'd like to, to get rolling is from the outside, both Braden Norris and Philip Alston. Yeah, absolutely. When your two best players got to make shots. Uh, you got to make shots from the outside to loosen up the defense around and try to, you know, keep this game in the low 60s because if it goes anywhere north of 70, I don't know if Loyola can score enough points to get there. Francis Okoro for St. Louis to jump it up. And Philip Alston for Loyola, Chicago. Teddy Valentine to toss it up. And away we go. First possession. It's in the hands of the NCAA assist leader from last year and this year, Yuri Collins. Yeah, and remember what we talked about. Let's see how long it's going to take for Loyola and Chicago to get their first foul. Because that's been an issue. Yeah, they've fouled a lot, and that's not good. They've also turned the ball over a lot. That's not good. This team doesn't turn it over much at all, especially this guy. Collins hunting for a shot. Shot clock is down. Entry to Okoro. Got to get it up, and he doesn't. And that's how defense can maybe grab you some momentum early. Yeah, outstanding defense. Yeah. Coach Valentine talked about it this morning in shoot around, forcing them to get deeper in the shot clock if you can, take away those early, quick, easy baskets. Jalen Quinn getting a start, the freshman for Loyola Chicago. In there with Bryce Golden, two guys who usually come off the bench. This is Golden trying to screen for Norris. That's Quinn, the lefty, and it goes down and out. You see St. Louis off a missed shot, wants to push Temple. Perkins around the screen and down the lane. Quinn knocked it out of bounds. So, so a lot of times defensively, they stayed matched up here. Everybody, good close out there. Nice job playing the post. You know, by the big fella, no easy. Left shoulder jump hook, outstanding defense. Ramblers at times have played well this year, but they've really had trouble putting 40 minutes of that together. Terrence Hargrove, a throw out high. Collins is a 27% three-point shooter. Stumbles. He has been sick all week, non-COVID illness. And another late shot clock situation of Coral misses. And you notice from a defensive strategy standpoint, while the Loyola in Chicago is trying to go under the pick and rolls, they're not trapping Collins. They're trying to stay matched up as much as possible. Norris ventures down the baseline. This is Alston, a really good score, and he's fouled. So far, no fouls for Loyola Chicago. And I know you're saying, hey, it's only two minutes in. But that's a big deal. Drew Valentine was talking about that an awful lot at shoot-around today. And, yeah, this first four minutes, this is the first run. You know, there are 10 four-minute rounds in a college basketball game. So Coach Valentine talked about, hey, in this first round, we can't win the game. We can't lose it, but we want to get off to a good start. Schweiger, that's a three. And Schweiger, the red shirt freshman, 39% from distance. This is a good shooting team, this Rambler team. Perkins fires, and he hits. Javante Perkins coming off a 27-point game in the win at George Washington. And Perkins noticed these last couple of times, as we alluded to, they're going under on those pick and rolls, so he's just trying to keep the defense on us. Norris, six feet tall. Yuri Collins, six feet tall. Golden, talented, and a turning left hook. Doesn't drop. He's the four-year starter, the transfer from Butler. This is Jimerson. Okoro. And now we'll see if Yolo Chicago can get a screen and get a couple of stops. Hargrove to the bucket. Schweiger fouled him. So philosophically as a defensively, whether it's on any level of basketball, if you can get three out of five stops, that bodes well for your defense. So, you know, defensively, the Ramblers have gotten off to a good start. Obviously, you know, they gave up a three. 
but uh, I don't think their intensity. This is Hardgrove. This first one is good. Billikens had some tight losses as well. I mean, they lost at Auburn by five. Boise State is a really good team out of the Mountain West, and they lost at home to Boise State by only five. And a couple of free throws and a two-point lead. Coach, Coach Ford talked about playing through a lot of the injuries, and we don't make excuses. Travis four teams, wherever he's been throughout his career, his teams just play hard. Eight years at Oklahoma State, seventh year here at St. Louis. Halston backing in, turning, and scoring. He is an elite scorer when he's inside 10 feet. And he's the one guy that can play through contact. So Sister Jean, she still delivers the prayer before the game and a scouting report and game plan as well. And Collins rises up. He averages 12 points a game to go with his 11 assists a game. That's a tough entry. And Tom Welch, who's in the ballgame, couldn't handle it. Good shot fake. Jimerson missed the three. Okoro the rebound. But it all started. Transition three after a turnover. You know Collins is going to find the open man. Jimerson, again, shot clock within five. Step back three. And he missed it short, and Okoro had a hand on it. Welch, though, sucks up the rebound. Schweiger crossing over. Kick out, rotate, Quinn, three. Got it! On time, on target passes. Passer makes the shooter. And Quinn, he's representing us lefties here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jimerson Okoro, that's a dive by Norris to knock it loose. And they keep the possession. Got numbers here. Five on four. Norris. Yes! Wow! That was 25 feet. It's amazing when you don't turn the ball over what the possibilities are. <laughs> and exactly the type of start that Drew Valentine wanted. Let's see if St. Louis can answer here. Boy, they've gotten this, the student section into the game early. Jimerson takes the screen. Okoro rolls. And a sweeping hook. And a foul. And a free throw coming. 11-9, Loyola Chicago on top of St. Louis. You're watching College Basketball on CBS Sports Network, presented by Orgain. Shot here from downtown Chicago. The Ramblers are off to a, a nice start. I love the energy, the connectivity of their team. Norris, of course, a great three-point shooter in his career here. And Francis Okoro, the senior, knocks home a free throw. That's a really nice three-point play. Draws it to a one-point game. And Jake Forrester, the senior that transferred from both Temple and Indiana, is into the ballgame. Seven points, five rebounds a game. St. Louis is... A little deeper because Jaden Dawson for the Ramblers is out with a broken hand. He's usually one of the first off the bench. They're finding points right now and controlling tempo. With every made bucket, it does not allow St. Louis to get out and run. Forrester with a moving screen. And on the last bucket, he tried to front Austin on the post, but the weak side help was significantly slow. To what they, we squeezed the backside, but there was no squeeze, there was no wall, there was a curtain. <laughs> Jamero Wilson into the ball game for Loyola Chicago. Drew Valentine's already gone deep on his bench. Welch turns and faces. 
trying to work a little high, low action here. That's Wilson, and he hits. Last five field goals have gone down. And you see the three-point shooting for Royal at Chicago. The lead stretches to six. Gary Collins working against Quinn. Penetrates, dishes. There's the first assist. And a nice swooping lay-in by Jimerson. And you notice that the hands of Gary Collins, you gotta have really good hands and hand-eye coordination to make that type of a one-handed pass. Norris against Collins, who's a very good on-ball defender. Norris in trouble. Shot clock's down. Quinn driving, body, scores! And in a situation like that, Norris will not get the assist, but he made that play by sucking in the defense, playing off the two feet. That's a play that they didn't make a couple of games of the last couple of games in all during conference. They would pass the ball to the other team, their opponents. Jimerson feeds the post. Forrester turns. Pickett, who's in the game, he had a really good should game be, at George Washington. This should be five seconds in the line. And he's still there. <laughs> and with a little baby hook, Forrester gets a bucket. And the lead is four for Loyola Chicago. St. Louis, Travis Ford talked an awful lot of practice today about taking away the threes and getting out in the face of the shooters. That's not happening right now. A little mid-range shot from Tom Welch. Loyola Chicago wants to play off the elbows. Perkins has the three and a Collins assist to go with it. And Perkins wants to play from 30 feet back. He, he can do that. He shot that one like he knows what he's doing. Had 24 points and four assists at George Washington. Had a 20-point game at St. Joe's. At the rim, Jimerson knocks it away. Collins starting, stopping, and a turnover. Quinn. Alston. He draws the foul. Loyola Chicago trying to slow down the best assist man in the country. He's two for two tonight, uh, playing under control. I mean, this guy got an NBA body. Look at his body. He can, that's why he plays through contact. Uh, he, he's really good at old-fashioned three-point plays at the basket, and it's, it's extremely hard. You know, I play on the NEIA level, and this when I transferred to the Division One level. It was a difficult jump. So it's not that easy to go from Division Two to, to Division One, and uh, he's done it effortlessly. The lead stays at one. Eleven and a half left. First half. Glad you're with us in Chicago. Billikens coming at four and one. Two teams winning last night. Dayton and VCU. They're five and one in the A10. Forrester a running hook. Offside rebound by Braden Norris, who leads the charge for the Rambles. Lob it, catch it. And Austin missed it, but a foul. Whether it was the shot or the rebound, not clear yet. And it is on the shot, so two free throws coming. Yeah, uh, Braden Norris tried to look like he was passing the ball like Yuri Collins. <laughs> but man, I'm just so impressed with Coach Valentine's team. To come out playing with a sense of urgency and pride. They're making each other better on the offensive end of the floor, and they're more of a chain. They're glued together on the defensive end of the floor. And they're making the threes. You know, they're four for five from three. That's it. Bryce Golden is a key guy in what they're trying to do right now as Alston comes out. Golden, a four-year starter at Butler, has been off to a slow start this year. He's got company, though. Larry Hughes, Jr., back in the ball game. Sincere Parker, first touch. And Parker with a difficult shot. A sophomore out of Rockford, Illinois. Yeah, some nice English on that ball. When you're driving at that angle, you got to put a little spin on it to assist that ball with going in. Norris off the screen. 
Weaves his way. Not a find, but a missed layup by Bryce Golden, albeit somewhat difficult. He was directly under the basket. St. Louis wants to attack the post. Forrester walks. Tomorrow night, triple header. UNCW, the Empire State takes on Hofstra. Hilltoppers battling Louisiana Tech. And then West Coast Conference, BYU and Santa Clara, CBS Sports Network. We're in the Atlantic 10 tonight. Rich Waltz along with Avery Johnson. St. Louis in first year in the A-10. Loyola, Chicago. They were picked to finish fifth preseason. They bump. And right now it's St. Louis that's fouling, not Loyola, Chicago. And, and when you look at what's happening from an offensive standpoint with Loyola, Chicago, they're utilizing their big guys to dribble handoff a lot because St. Louis loves to force their pick and rolls down to the baseline, and that could give you trouble with big guys just setting screens. So to relieve some of that pick and roll action, they're using their big guys as point forwards and point fives. Schweiger with the miss and a rebounding foul. That's going on St. Louis, and the reaction by Travis Ford is not a good one. Teddy Valentine and Travis Ford nose to nose for a moment. And in disbelief stands Javon Pickett. And you know what I love about that? I've been in that situation, and I've received technical fouls because you get a little bit animated as a coach. But that was great. Veteran official Teddy Valentine, just, hey, just calm down. <laughs> For, oh, I give you a warning. For Pickett, though, it's his second personal. And he'll take a seat on the St. Louis bench. Golden now spinning in traffic. Knocked loose, got it back, and then missed the shot. And Parker pushes Temple. Billiken's 45% from the field. A good three-point shooting team as well. With Jimerson. Maybe their best. He's at 47 threes. Misses there. And this is an opportunity for our Amblers to increase that lead with Yuri Collins on the bench. I know he's about to check back in, but... Norris falling away. Got it! Braden Norris. He's a senior. He does have another year. He is obviously their leader. An ultimate uh, competitor, Drew Valentine says. Parker rises and hits. And Drew talked, Valentine talked about he keep bringing the entire team back. That's right. Sincere Parker. Top of the key now. It's 22-21 Loyal with Chicago on top. Alston can play inside and out. Nice cut, Schweiger. That's a goal 10. And a good look from Alston. And that's what St. Louis talked about in shoot around this morning. Protecting the paint. No easy paint entries. Teams can't get to the basket unless they enter the paint with any res without any resistance. And we talked about that in shoot around and just couldn't quite execute. Jimerson, that's short. Back in is Jalen Quinn. Hit a three early. We're going to leave this guy open. That's Alston! Well, it's Chicago following their game plan to at the basketball, very athletic guys, and they've brought out the best in me. Now, you've watched Collins tonight. You've seen him on film. What makes him special? Court vision. Really outstanding point guards have what I call a panel panoramic vision of their entire court and they see plays before they happen and they know what how their teammates function at a high level on certain areas of the floor so you're not going to give the big man a shot behind the three-point line you'll try to get him on the run that's another moving screen rolling was okoro and he rolled right into the defender you got to hold your ground before you roll yeah and thank you guys for Taking me back down memory lane oh, for a man. minute. Appreciate that, guys. I mean, everybody <laughs> associates you, and rightfully so, with the the Spurs. You were in the Alamo Dome, uh, right, the other night. You and Sean Elliott doing the game. And NBA coach, NBA player, NBA champion. But in college, man, you were dynamite. I mean, that's 
you still hold just about every assist record going in the NCAA. This is Austin. And Austin's hook. Good job by Okoro to body him off. Collins to Parker. You know, the scouting report for Loyola Chicago against Collins was make him shoot. They'd rather have him shoot than pass. And we'll see, you know, who else is going to be able to knock down some shots because you know, Javante Perkins is the one guy that's knocked down threes. He's on the bench. Nobody else has been able to get it going from three. Now, one of the trademarks of Loyola Chicago is taking charges, and Norris just took one. Travis Ford. And the Billikens down right now by five. And when you don't have a lot of shot blocking, you, you got to take charge. That's the only alternative. And they don't really have a designated big in there most of the time. Alston launches, misses. And the rebound to Terrence Hardgrove. This is Collins in tight. Delivers. Okoro scores. Yeah, Okoro to transfer from Oregon. You know, he was raised in Nigeria. This guy plays with ferocity. Known for his rebounding, the second in the A-10 in that. Quinn and Norris in the backcourt. Schweiger, good three-point shooter. Lob, and also the shot altered by Okoro. And that's going St. Louis's way. Yeah, so a lot of times here's Collins, you know, staying on the floor. And now Coro, you know, left shoulder jump hook. That's his move. Ten times out of ten, he wants to get to that left shoulder. Collins kicks Jimerson. Missed the three. Look at Okoro on the boards. Now the rebound to Tom Welch. I know he'd love to have that one back. Welch is not a three-point shooter. Norris certainly is. He's hit one tonight. And a whistle and a foul on St. Louis. Great weekend of NFL postseason. Sunday morning at 9 Eastern, your favorite NFL crew breaks down the divisional postseason action. That other pregame show right here on CBS Sports Network. Loyola Chicago to the free throw line. Picked fifth in their first year in the A-10. They've lost their first five. And there's no question the competition is stiffer. True Valentine talked about that. And he said, we, we're making the adjustment. The one thing he told us is, hey, look, our culture is strong. No one's panicking. And his his message during practice today was more of a personal one than X's and O's. Yes, he went down the line and shared with the expectations of every player. He basically walked and stood in front of every player and said, hey, I believe in you. You know, hey, Brayden. We want you to be the ultimate leader, defend with no errors, and handle pressure. And then he went to the next guy, you know, Kennedy. You know, set the tone, be a dog. You're built for this. It, it was just so amazing how he was just pumping that confidence in each one of his players, which he said Potter Moser was really outstanding in that regard. It's a foul on Quinn. Travis Ford and uh, Drew Valentine. Matching wits right now. 28-23 Loyola Chicago lead. And it's, you know, rolls are reverse right now. Loyola's not turning it over that often. They turned it over just once. That's a huge win. They had 41 turnovers their last two games combined. Hardgrove kicks. Clock is down. And now it's under five. Collins. He has a shooting touch. That's a 15-footer. Oh, that was outstanding. We talked to Collins this morning, and he shared 
how much of a benefit it is to play for a coach like Travis Ford, who played the position, Amen. who was an outstanding uh, college player at Kentucky. Schweiger steps through, and he's fouled. It may have been Collins. It is. And you talk to Collins That's about second. some of his uh, point guards who he admired. He talked about Allen Iverson, but he also said, hey, CP3, <laughs> Chris Paul. Well, he said, you know what? He started with Dwayne Wade, and then as a youngster, he realized that's not my game. <laughs> so said, then it was Iverson. And Rondo. And then Rondo. Those <laughs> yeah. were the two guys. Here's Schweiger now, who redshirted last year and scoring pop. St. Louis has got a little bit of foul issues here. This is Schweiger's numbers this year. Perkins, Pickett, those guys had the big games against George Washington and Collins. All had two personal. And it looks like the wrong team is fouled. Yeah. <laughs> and, and look, I know it sounds simple, but Loyola Chicago was fouling way too much. Their opponents coming in just in the five conference games, had 48 more free throw attempts. Parker driving. He's fouled. How do you stop fouling? Well, in practice, it's hard on two things. As coaches would officiate and call it tight. And the other was turnovers. And so what Drew Valentine did to... Yeah, for this is the first ten ball drill. And the ten ball, you get ten <laughs> balls. Start your live every turnover, you take away a ball. And by the time you get offense for the rest of the day. And Avery it's not a big leap, but players would rather work on the offense than <laughs> That's a nice save there by Wilson, and a good steal. Hughes kicks out, three on the way. Parker, sincerely. The sophomore, just like that, St. Louis is within a point. Yeah, sensational pass in transition by Hughes, finding Parker. Norris, good finds. Welch at the rim is fouled. And it's Okoro, and that'll be his second personal foul. Yeah, generating some offense off of these steals. Here there was a three-on-one. Could have easily ran for a layup, but Parker ran to a spot, and Hughes found him in rhythm and switch. Tom Welch, the senior. Brings a lot of energy. And Valentine likes his attitude. And this is why you got to play the game. You can talk about whose favorite or team has lost five in a row. Things change in a minute. <laughs> one game can, one half can change the team's confidence. And, they get, and Loyola Chicago getting so many different contributions tonight. Just two turnovers, five fouls. Sincere Parker. How about that? Same spot, same result. So next time, if Sincere makes a shot on the next possession from the same spot, Coach Valentine's gonna have to sub somebody out the game. Parker has 11 of the last 15 for the Billikens. All tied at 32. Norris. Lob pass and a foul. Larry Hughes Jr. Both teams trading buckets. Yeah, you know I'm from New Orleans, so I love hot sauce. And right now, Parker is on fire. Loves about a player. That's a big loss that they're still figuring out who picks up the slack for him. Yeah, significant loss for St. Louis. But also, it goes to how good of a job Coach Ford is doing. You know, you lose a player like that, and you squeak out a win 
against George Mason by one point where you outscored George Mason 9-0 uh, in the last two minutes and five seconds. So he's, Coach Ford is a very experienced coach. He knows exactly what he's doing. We saw it this morning in the shoot his, his shoot-around is like a, a, a CEO's convention, right? It's very professional. And players, they respond. Yes. Yes. Very corporate and organized. And he actually allowed us to watch and participate by watching the videos. Right. right. He wouldn't let us walk through, though. Yeah. I mean, you and I wanted to, to run horns and, <laughs> yes. and all that, but it was not to be. That was a really fun practice session for both of these schools today. This is Austin driving and losing the basketball. It squirts out of his hands, but again, just three turnovers for Loyola Chicago. That's a huge win. And you remember this morning I talked to Coach Valentine. I said, what's a good turnover and a bad turnover in your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> do you have to differentiate between the two? And he said, yes, we absolutely do. Gibson Jimerson, he is struggling. He's 0 for 4 from distance. Hughes, that's a pretty jump shot. Larry Hughes Jr., of course, his dad, a great player on that NCAA tournament team back in 1998 for St. Louis. And because of foul trouble, you know, St. Louis is going to just staying in the zone a little bit, mixing it in. He's trying to protect their guys from fouling. Welch in tight, missed the jump hook. And I would say the zone was in huge success. Larry Hughes, the zone was a huge success. Did you pick up on that, Rich? Yes. Oh, I, my I, play on words. I like it. <laughs> I like it. St. Louis on top, 34-32. Travis Ford pacing, though. He's got a trio of players with two personal fouls. Now four, Okoro, Pickett, Perkins, and Collins. Hughes to inbound. Jefferson is screen from Forrester. Now Forrester, 6'9", 225 on Welch. And he missed Welch with the rebound. Norris pushes tempo. Quinn to the bucket. Good job by Forrester to run rim to rim. Yeah, that, but on the other end, the big guy, you know, Forrester, you got to make the defense pay when nobody's coming to help. I mean, absolutely nobody. They weren't digging off the passer. Trap, they played him straight up, head to head. He can back his man down a little bit deeper and get an even better shot. Sincere Parker's been the best off the bench. This is Parker on a cut over Norris. And Sincere Parker's got 13 points. He's 5 of 6. Nice pass. Austin shot blocked. A seven-minute drought for field goals for the Rambos. Yes, that spark off the bench from Sincere Parker. That's some really good moves for St. Louis, especially... You know, going into the second half here, we got a, less than a minute to go in the first half. Jimerson, step back. Forrester, clock is down. He'll take the mid-range and hit it. Jake Forrester. His last six games, he's been really, really good. That's a 9-0 run and a much-needed timeout for the Ramblers. All of a sudden, St. Louis is on top. A six-point lead. On the road in the Atlantic 10. Haven't been successful there yet because Loyola Chicago, they're four for seven from behind the three point line. This is a key 40 seconds for Loyola Chicago. They've lost momentum, they've lost the lead. Do you uh, try to get a two for one here? I know that's more NBA yeah, that's than, more NBA. than A-10. And you can tell the way they came out, they weren't looking to get a quick shot. Welch, man in the air, and this time he finishes. Nice and under control. Didn't travel. Point of emphasis played off the two feet for Loyola Chicago. Final seconds, first half. This is Parker, he's got 13, and he airballs one. 1.5. Yeah, it's different when you're running those pick and rolls and you're trying to knock down the three from behind the screen, or when you're receiving a pass from your teammate that's created a 
open shot for you. So it's a little bit different in that situation All right, for Parker. It looks like Welch going to throw it into the front court. There's nobody in the back court for him to throw it to. Schweiger gets it off in time, but it's short. He's really entertaining first half. Loyola Chicago is 0-5 in the A-10, but they jumped off to a quick start and had the lead. But their coach hoped they would do. They weren't fouling. They weren't sending St. Louis to the line. And they were not turning the basketball over. There's your foul trouble. And those are key guys. I mean, Perkins had 27 last game. Pickett had 24. Okoro's second in rebounding in the conference. And, of course, Collins is the nation's assist leader. First possession, Norris. Rotates and Schweiger misses the three and here comes Collins Sweeps it to Jimerson corner to Hargrove and that's a three And this is one of the things that uh, coach Valentine talked about He said hey, look we think we'll play well enough to win this game in the first half But can do we have that type of mental and physical stamina to put two halves together? So they play well in spurts eight minute spurts Played well overall in the first half, but can they put together another good? Ramblers got a good look on that first possession. So did St. Louis. Norris, that's a lengthy three. Alston had the rebound, stolen by Hargrove. And this run now has ballooned to a 16-4 run. And the Billikens have their biggest lead of the ball game, seven-point lead. And again, when you you're St. Louis, see they're trying to figure out if they can build on this lead. Perkins a three. Yes. And, and that's before the, the main eight hour that we talked about that had 13 points at, at the half since here Parker comes back in the game. Bramblers need a bucket. They need to stop this run if they want to hang around in this game. Alston clears some space, forces it up with a left hand, rips the rebound away, saves the possession, Golden kicks, Schneider's three. Whoa, that was all Austin. That's their first, three. that's their first offensive rebound of the game, which that's the best way that you can get easy wide open threes is with offensive rebound. Collins misses the 12 footer. That's the way you can manufacture threes, offensive rebounds, transition threes. It's a bad pass by Schweiger. That's the type of turnover that has plagued the Ramblers all season long. 41 of them in their last two conference games. They have found new ways to turn it over. <laughs> yeah, they've invented new ways. Perkins again, and this one is short. Golden has the rebound. Schweiger in transition. Lead is seven. Golden. It's a rare three. It's three of 13 on the season. Well, I just think, you know, Loyola Chicago, they got to play through Norris and Austin. they got to play through those guys almost every possession now on the floor. Jimerson lost the ball. Look at Norris rip it away. Very hustle in that 50 50 ball, a loose ball. Swiger doubles. They'll let Golden shoot. Alston falling away. And the rebound to Okor. By the way, if you're wondering where Marquise Kennedy is for the Ramblers, he was a late scratch from the lineup. Collins dumps it. Okoro lost it. Got it back. Fouls on the reach by the Ramblers. It's all the little things. It's all the smaller, minute details. Loose balls, spacing, catching the ball with two hands, ball security. All five players knowing exactly what you're running. This is a little bit of a stagger situation. Here comes Jemison. This is when they like to get him isolated. There it is. They'd like to get him going, and he hits an 18-footer. He was 0 for 4 from 3 in that first half. And the lead 
is at nine. You like when I tell you what's coming? Through? I do like that. That's good. <laughs> Alston hangs in the air. He started out quickly, but misses that shot. Look at Collins go. Look at Collins miss. And a rebound to Schweiger. Alston has missed his last seven shots. Schweiger falling. It's a block. And normally, Yuri Collins, you got to remember, I think he's been out for about a week. Yes, he has, with an illness. Nine-point lead. Billiken's still hooping right now. Ever wonder why they call it the American dream and not the American goal? Eric Or plan? Maybe. It's because in dreams, you can do anything. In dream. But uh, hitting a shot here, he's got four points. Yuri Collins, four points, four assists. And it's Sincere Parker, who's still on the bench, who came off the bench in the first half that leads St. Louis. He's got 13. You can see the shooting percentage has gone down dramatically for this Loyola Chicago team. Norris in trouble and somehow creates a bucket. Wow. <laughs> Who would have ever thought that we would say that Norris would overpower his defender? Ted Valentine. Thought after he scored here, here's the power move. He's playing like Charles Barkley inside right there. I think he right. thought it was a little bit of a comment that he had towards the official. Jefferson driving, swooping, and it's a foul. Jefferson helped to his feet. And he'll get free throws here, and Tom Welch picks up the foul. It's his second personal. Just a couple of Ramblers have two fouls. St. Louis has got five players with two fouls right now. So when you talk about halftime adjustments, Coach Ford coming out of timeout. Obviously, they're trying to attack Welch with this matchup with Jimerson. And they're trying to attack him by Jimerson, you know, not necessarily shooting threes, but getting downhill, forcing, putting that pressure on Welch defensively to move around. A lot of times you talk about scouting reports, it's not always defense, your defense, but how does your offense attack your opponent's defense in a specifically an individual match? Norris weaving his way in, rises with one hand, tip to Coro saves it. St. Louis has done a really nice job on the boards tonight. Right now they are plus 10. Collins against Schweiger. That's a quick disadvantage. Wow, how did he find a Coro with that entry? The miss. No slam, offensive rebound. And man, this is the wrong team, the best team offensively in the A-10. You don't want to give them extra possessions. That's a Rambler foul. Uh, ben Schweiger, his second. And Marquise Kennedy is up and coming in. Kennedy had a leg injury during warm-ups and was taken out of the starting lineup. But here he is for the first time in the second half. This is a guy they're really counting on. Brother Rice High School here in Chicago. He was a two-time Missouri Valley pick in the all-bench team. What was it Drew Valentine told us about? He's told him, hey, you got to be a dog. Set the tone. You are a lead dog for us. Quick trigger and by another, Jimerson. Another really good ball handler on the floor. Got it can make a play off the dribble. But Kennedy will see what his impact is. Wilson driving. Lost the ball. It stays at the 20 to shoot. In a game that was led by Loyola Chicago in the first half. St. Louis closed on a big run. At the end of halftime lead and now has stretched that to a nine-point lead here. And Kennedy shoots 46%. Not got 21 threes on the season. Norris missed the shot. A coral with the rebound. 
Ramblers are two of ten. Collins with pass. And, and even though you want a guy to shoot that, you disrespect <laughs> mid-range game is not as fashionable, but if you can make a mid-range it's better than missing. So, Collins got to his spot very disrespectful. Norris, quick three, and he hits it. Man in a hand. But, man, you sense just a little bit more urgency from St. Louis to start this half. Jimerson, baseline jumper, and it's good. Gibson Jimerson, the sophomore out of Richmond, Virginia. Austin, he had a good start. That's a foul, that's a quarrel. Yes, yeah, it's good when other teammates can create a wide open shot. That's what we talked about. Kennedy being inserted in the lineup, came off the bench, got Norris a wide open three. Bang. Philip Alston to the line. And he gets two. And Alston from the line is two of seven. That, those are the little things that add up. And they become big things. And that's happened to Loyola Chicago, opening their first year of the A-10 at 0-5. Funny, we talked to the coaching staff. You know, obviously, Austin is an outstanding offensive player. They're saying his next jump, that next step for him is on the defensive end, bringing that same energy and concentration. And St. Louis talked about it that, hey, let's, make, let's try to make him play a little defense. He's out after that free throw. He's a good free throw shooter, 72%. Jimerson, hand on it. That was Norris. Picked up. This is Kennedy. Steps through. Missed the shot. Two Ramblers. That's a walk. They both had the ball. They both took steps. So I think if you add that up, that's four steps with the ball. Even with Sister Jean playing for you. <laughs> Still four steps, right? We had a chance to <laughs> oh sit down God. with her before the game. You know, her game plan, we asked her what's the game plan, it echoed Drew Valentine's. Stop fouling, take care of the basketball. And play through adversity. Yes. Colin trying to feed the posts. Welch may have picked up the foul. You know what else was nice? Sister Jean personalized a message to both of our wives. Yes. Or your mom and my, and my wife. And your yes. Wife. And of course, Seth Davis is helping her with a book. That's coming out soon. And she said, she told Seth she's doing all of the talking. She's in control. <laughs> no, there's no ghost riding there, right? And a nice baseline out of bounds leads to a Jimerson layup, which leads to the largest lead. And St. Louis has an 11 point lead. Wilson, Schweiger, Norris thinking about a three, in the lane almost travels, and that is Collins, oh, that's Pickett, that's beautiful, that's what we were talking about, Collins' vision and his feel for the game, he basically made that pass blindfolded, Yuri Collins with the steal, and the off-balance assist. Yeah, he was like a ballerina in that situation. So here we are, nice cut right beating up on uh, St. Louis until he put this little freshman kid in the game, and he turned the scrimmage around with, it, with his fancy passes and all of his different court activity. And, and man, he's doing the same thing tonight in the second half. A 19-point turnaround from that Loyola lead. Norris, Schreiber, Quinn, Alston, Golden. This is Golden. The Butler transfer is tied up. Held ball. Arrow is going St. Louis way. 
That's as good as a turnover right there. 56-43, St. Louis in charge right now. Guy, if you miss it, to have an advantage on the offensive boards against a smaller defender. You saw that number three of 12 in the second half shooting. Is that good defense by Travis Ford's Billikens? Is that just poor shooting from the Ramblers? I think it's just poor shooting from the Ramblers and decision making. So that's, like I said, that's a turnover, but that turnover is not on the big guy. That's on Norris. Coach Valentine would have no problems if he would have taken that shot, especially against a 6 9 center. He really can't go. Boy, Ramblers came out in the zone, and the Billikens picked him apart. And Javante Perkins with a nice soft touch. Look at this run by St. Louis. Biggest lead of the game right now is 15. Alston. Yeah, so here's this zone. It's a little bit of a 2-3 matchup zone. St. Louis wants to get the ball in the middle of the floor. The middle of the floor, that's the danger area right there. And now you're putting one of your best players who can make that shot in the middle of the floor. You got your best passer in the country that can thread the needle anywhere. But it's always good when you have points of emphasis offensively and practice and shoot arounds and they carry over the games. And they must have talked about that 10 times uh, this morning in shooting. And this kind of feels what, what Drew Valentine told us. Isn't it? His team has played well in stretches. But consistently to get 40 minutes out of them has been a challenge in conference play. I mean, you, you don't beat Clemson like they did if you don't have talents. Jimerson misses a three. Austin has the rebound. Let's see if the Rambles have a run in. Yeah, and Coach Valentine's also excited about the future of this program. Signed a top 50 kid that was Miles Rubin, that was the MVP in the hoop tall center. Quinn, that's a clean look at a three, and he hammers it. So, 10-point game. Halfway through, second half in Chicago. Yuri Collins, the assist leader in the nation. Got six in this ball game to go with six points. Jimerson. He is starting to make a difference in the second half. Yeah, another way that you can attack the zone by pick and roll in the zone and flooding the weak side. So nice little, what we call a snapback play. Excellent call. Corner three, way off. Welch has the rebound, and he's fouled. Collins got him. Yeah. So in on these last play, it started off with a three-point shot. Quinn wide open, found the hole in the zone. Yuri calls with that foul. It's his third personal. There's Tom Welch, and he'll shoot two. And there are different ways, Rich, to get the ball in the middle of his own first pass, but then penetrate or pick and roll. First one goes down for Welch. By the way, Gibson Jimerson now with 13 points. <laughs> Collins. This is Forrester. Jimerson's Screen Perkins. That's pretty. Right now, the execution by St. Louis offensively is outstanding. Beautifully executed curl in that situation. And you can't really have success on the curl unless a big guy sets a legal, hard legal screen. So beautiful execution from both offensive players in that situation. The screener and the shoot. Nice job by Quinn who had the size advantage. The six foot three freshman backs Collins down and scores over him. Loyola Chicago, they can't afford to trade baskets with St. Louis. They're going to have to get some stops here. Still enough time. Perkins!
Pelicans, much better shooting half here, especially these last three, four minutes. And boy, did they need Perkins to get 27 points in that last game against DW. Alston's doubled, in trouble. Schweiger, too strong. Approaching the under eight timeout. And the Billikens really struggling. And see, this is a point guard right here. He knows, look, we got to get a little bit deeper in the shot clock. Offensively, it requires patience. Perkins kicks. Pickett lost it and a foul on Alston. Billikens get a little pick and curl and buckets. Billikens baseline out of bounds and it's Collins who will trigger it in. You can see the bench scoring. Most of that was Parker, Sincere Parker in that first half. He had 13 off the bench. Perkins trying to get loose. Billikens shooting it well right now. And the Ramblers back in their man-to-man -man defense. It's a rebounding foul on either Welch or Forrester. Pick a 10. And it's Welch. And, and in those situations, Rich, it's important. That, and I know Coach Ford does this all the time. When you come out of a timeout against a team that's been primarily playing zone, you have to have a zone play and a man-to-man play. Just in case. 16th out in Loyola, Chicago. Here's Sincere Parker. That's not a bad alternative when Parker is replacing Perkins. <laughs> no. They both are playing well offensively. Forrester down the lane. Good rotation from Collins. Parker and a whistle. Before the shot, Forrester hit the deck. And that's a foul on Forrester. Second person. Travis Ford trying to go to 5-1, and one, trying to keep pace with Dayton and VCU. Dayton beat Davidson last night in the A-10. VCU beat UMass. Those two are 5-1. and one. Richmond won again last night. They're 4-2. and two. St. Louis will win here. They go 5-1. and one. It's back to a three-way tie. At the top of the conference, Alston, a floater. Man, it had been a long dry spell for Philip Alston. And a long dry spell for Loyola, eight and a half minutes. Now here's your three-two zone matchup. Loyola's good desperate to get some stops here. Still under seven minutes, but oh, how about that? Disrespect me, and I will bury a three. And, and Yuri Collins talked about this morning that, hey, yes, I am a pass-first guy, but I'll do whatever it takes for my team to be successful. If I need to score 20, I'll do it. If I need to get 20 assists. So that time, he was left wide open. Got nine points and six assists in this one. A lot of dribbling here. Not a lot of people open. Wilson, shot clock is down. Got to get it up. He did not beat the clock. And that bucket will not count. And, and that's another example. We talked about it a little bit with Ray Norris. Sometimes when you got a wide open, because the, the whole game plan was surrounded about cutting off the passing lanes. You know, he only wants to pass. He doesn't want to score. So, you know, you have opportunities like you already have to knock down a three or some driving lane. That's Catch the defense leaning a little bit. And that's literally in the Ramblers' game plan today. Make him shoot. Don't let him pass. You want to make him shoot contested shots. Forrester. Oh, man. That's a strong move. Powerful move. And finish at the basket for the big fella. And this one's getting out of hand. 71-53. Norris, that three is good. And that's the shot you wanted him to take about 10 minutes ago. He's got to consistently look to take that shot. But, you 
know, he's the competitor. Braden Norris, Coach Valentine talked about, he's the ultimate competitor. He's fearless. Norris has got 15. He's three of four from three. Collins controlling the clock, controlling the game. Left hand, free throws. So nice little slip here by the big fella. Two-hand catch from Corey Tate, associate head coaches, Phil Forte, and Will Bailey ran the scouting report this morning for the Billikens. There was a, a question as to how long Collins could go. He didn't play in the last game. He really hasn't practiced for the last week. So he's not at 100%. All right, single season, assist per game leaders. Avery, you were over 13, 13.3. There's Collins. He could end up where he is right now, third all time. But, but on that list, I think Collins is the best player. Oh, come on. <laughs> how, how many years did you play in the league? A 16. All right. <laughs> End of discussion. No, he has an opportunity to play 16 years also. And you and you have a championship ring, right? I do, I do. Schweiger, dishes, Alston, stripped. Great block there. Sincere Parker. Pick it through. Inside five minutes. Dominant second half of St. Louis. Alston gets in. And Forrester fouls him. Told you last night, Dayton, VCU, and Richmond all won. So Richmond's at four and two. VCU and Dayton five and one. St. Louis looks like they're headed to five and one. And a three-way tie. And those are the schools with the best net ranking or ranking as well. Dayton 62, BCU 84, St. Louis 90 starting play tonight. All teams that if they can just get in the NCAA tournament, they, you know, they can win on that first weekend. You can win. Excellent coaching. Uh, you know, players that can make shots. Uh, Anthony Grant's doing an outstanding job, you know, at Dayton. Is that alma mater? You just got to get in, man. I called the first and second round of the NCAA tournaments last year, and you just never know. Once you get in, sometimes it can be upset city in that first, on that first weekend. And I'm telling you, it's that NCAA tournament. It's all what it's made out to be. <laughs> and some. Amen. You want it expanded? No. No. I like it. Collins, a short quarrel, second best rebounder in the league. And he's fouled 71-57, frustrating night for Drew Valentine and the Ramblers. That might still be coaching, but Drew Timmy, he's, a, you know, arguably one of the top two big men in the country. And he's had to be the best player on that team and one of the best players in the nation. Yeah, yeah, for, you're right. Forget about big men, players in the nation. Outstanding. Cool. Uh, 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 Richardson, Texas. Free throws have been good. And having the time of his life in Spokane, Washington. Yeah, Richardson, Texas. Suburb of DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth. That's your home address. Yeah. Home for me right now. Gate 21 with DFW. 72 57. St. Louis seemingly in control. Norris driving the baseline. 56% is what St. Louis has shot in this game. Quinn with a spin and a miss. And Okoro and the rest of the Billikens have been dominant on the boards. Billikens are plus 13. Rebounded. And here's a little play they call a double drag. They're trying to get Collins going down the heel normally, but they want to use the clock a little bit here, take care of the basketball. Perkins waiting for a screen. Oh! Had the contact, fires it up, and it counts. 
I thought the bank was, I thought banks were closed. <laughs> That was more of an ATM. Okay, beautiful bank shot. And Wilson with that foul. You kind of expect that, Rich, from, from a guy like uh, Philip Austin, you know, with his body, you know, 6'6", 230 pounds, but Perkins a little bit on the lean side. Well, one of the really good things about St. Louis they don't have a, a 17 or an 18 point score. Collins a dozen, Perkins 11 a game, Jimerson 13, Pickett 11. But they've got guys that, you know, it's always somebody that will, will have a big game and get you 20 and everybody else contributes. Alston misses in tight. And Yuri Collins, not 100%, has played well tonight. 9.6 assists. Out of the double. Collins behind the back. Ah, rare turnover. Schweiger in the passing lane. Norris kept the foot down. Missed the three. Yeah, Norris is really overly aggressive to try to knock down some threes, but when even when you're down at, with this deficit, you can take the best shot. It may be a drive. You don't necessarily have to take bad threes. You got to get the quickest best shot. Jemerson finds Okoro flushes. As much as we talked about Okoro and specifically Collins, you got to give Give some credit tonight. He's played some really good basketball. The defense by St. Louis, especially in the half court, terrific. It's another six minute drought right now. Field goal drought for Loyola of Chicago. And the Billiken fans who have traveled here, you can see them down the lower right coming to their feet. You yeah, have a couple of games, uh, home games for St. Louis this year. I'm really excited about it. That is an offensive foul. It's a charge. Hardgrove going hard to the bucket. Nice quick drive. When you make quick decisions, don't hold it. Shoot it, drive it, pass it. All right, give me the positives and the negatives to this game. First start with St. Louis. What do you see? What do you like? I love how they have multiple guys that can score the basketball. They don't have to just rely on, you know, Collins, multiple guys that can score it and pass it, shoot it. So they're multi-dimensional. That's what I love about this team. All right. Well, yep. You can roll in the substitution. Yeah, yeah, during game action. So you really don't want an official timeout. You're just trying to get some other players in the game. And you're really trying to get your best guys off the floor. Gotcha. Without a dead ball, yes. a foul. And ball. you're not trying to embarrass the other team. Out of bounds. All right, if so you're in the lead. let's continue then. Loyal Chicago, what do you like? And, and where are they lacking right now? Well, I just think they need to attempt more three-point shots. Their, their three-point shooters need to get up more attempts. They did a better job of taking care of the basketball overall tonight. But, and then... Me more stamina and intestinal fortitude in the second half. You, you can't just play one half. You got to be able to put two halves together. Travis Ward still coaching him up. 76-59. It uh, will be a, a road win for St. Louis in the 8-10. It'll put them at 5-1 and 13-6. And and yeah, and you're always looking for teachable moments. Yep. That's what Coach Ford is doing. You, you see Coach Valentine, he's up. You, you're looking for every drop of information that you can use, utilize for teaching and motivating your team. Pick and roll. Golden couldn't hold the pass from Quinn. In the final seconds here, what was a really entertaining ball game in the first half. Loyola Chicago had the lead most of the way. Great run by St. Louis to grab a small lead at the half and then second half dominance by the Billikens. They shoot 58% on the road, 47 from three, and win 
going away. Fifth straight against Loyola Chicago. First, obviously, in the A-10. Yeah, especially just a clean second half for the most part from St. Louis.